You're listening to Mr. Liverpool himself, Frank Carlisle, exclusively, exclusively on Mersey Radio. Oh, good evening, everybody. It's uh, Frank Carlisle here, Mersey Radio, and we've got a fantastic show tonight. I think uh, I've just been looked over there by uh, Gilchrist when I said fantastic. He, he thought I was going to say something else there. I'm sure of it. Well, anyway, I've got Ed in. Hello, Ed. Hi, hi Frank, how are you doing? I'm alright, thank you. Uh, you looking forward to the show tonight? Absolutely. And uh, right facing him, I've got another uh, fella, and this fella's a rock and roller and everything else, and well well versed, as they say. Is it well versed, Ed, or well adversed? I, I would think the latter, in, in, in his case. In his case. Well, it's none other than Mr. Paul Cappy. Hi Frank, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you, Paul? I'm good. I'm, I'm feeling adversarial. <laughs> not versarial. No, 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 I'm not versarial. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like that. What do you think of the weather, boys? Well, it's up and down, isn't it, Frank? Um, well, I've been away over the weekend, and it was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And what about, uh, well, Laura, your daughter, who's uh, the drummer in Kappa's band, the amazing Kappa band. You mean the one who's not here tonight? The one who's not here tonight, yeah. Letting us down. We have, <laughs> we, have uh, a, we have a saying in the band, Frank, it's never be the one who isn't there. Because you're going to get talked about. That's the song, isn't it? That is a song. Never be the one who isn't there. There's a song in there, mm. Paul. <laughs> no, Laura's not here tonight, yeah, but, you know, maybe one time she will come. Because... Next week, you know, tonight I've got um, Ian Sofa on. Ian Sofa's a very, very, well, he's a top notch, this is what I say, he's a top notch historian. So we've got him on for uh, a, a while. We've got Grant Niebergall, and you know Grant Niebergall, don't you? I know Grant, I know Ian and Grant, they're great. Okay, okay. so I've got uh, Grant's on, and he's got a couple of guests. Um, Grock. Grock Dogs. It's a new. It's a band. It's not a new band. I don't think, but it's new to me. Grock Dogs, and we'll be talking to them as well. Ted Spaniak and Billy Klein, uh, and then we have David Dow. Who David is a, a Doctor Who mate. Who has a Doctor Who merchandise museum of all things. Absolutely amazing. And uh, we'll be asking him about that anyway. But he's a he's an authority on Doctor Who. And Joe Whitaker, a Hollywood correspondent, she'll be coming on. And we've got great music also. And just before we go over, lads, uh, I've got to bring football into it because these are two Liverpool supporters. So, what's uh, what's your thoughts on? Well, you're a football supporter in, in 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 the Liverpool brand as well, aren't you, Frank? So that we're sort of ganging up on. He's a neutral. Uh, oh, are you, you, you neutral, uh, Frank? Yeah, I'm a neutral. He yeah. is tonight. Yeah. So, what do you think of the? The lack of, uh, shall we say, purchases. Well, I keep hearing that we're buying all kinds of people and it's all in the bag and we're going to spend 200 million by the end of next week or, yeah. or something. Yeah. Have we got to the end of August to do this? Yeah, but the thing is... All uh, the good ones came have gone. Up, well, it, it could easily happen, that. And then it's the bargain basement stuff. But when it came out of the club, that couple of weeks before the end of the season, everything was more or less done and dusted for the targets for next season and then this is all the uh, this is we've got Salah for example mm-hmm. Salah has been brought in but that's about it yeah the, my, my my understanding from people who you know on, on Facebook who, who who know better than I do and they say right well it's all spent it's all done and it's all going to happen mm. and it doesn't involve Wayne Rooney <laughs> You know, nearly choked on me cup of tea then. Who's Wayne Rooney? <laughs> yeah, who's Wayne? It's, it's that fella that used to kiss his badge when he scored for Man U. Oh, that's him. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to get into talking about the Blues. <laughs> no, of course not. No, not like that. You know, no, I don't do what they do to us. You know, I, I've got some friends who, he, what, what did he say? He's not an Everton supporter, he's an anti Liverpool supporter. <laughs> I know, and it's just absolutely... Can I just mention it? I always have to mention this, and I never do. I never, ever mention him. Because Jason says, you never mentioned it again. Oh, I'm okay, I'm sorry. And it's next week's show. Besides, tonight's show. And next week's show is Conspiracy Theories. Oh, yeah. That's next week's show. 
Now on the con- conspiracy theories next week, we have David Johnson. And David Johnson's one of the top notch fellas. Not the footballer then. Not the footballer, unfortunately. That is a conspiracy theory, <laughs> isn't it? Within, what, that he's within, a footballer? Within, within itself. <laughs> and he played for Everton as well. Yeah, he did, yeah. And uh, we have uh, Aisha Bruff. She used to be in UFO. Oh, Aisha. She used to be in... UFO. Did she? Yeah, she certainly did. That's, that's mysterious. With Gabrielle Drake. Was she Gabrielle Drake in that, or was that a different no. one? No, well, Gabrielle that Drake was... Uh, that Gabrielle it was. Was that UFO? It was, she it was the, wasn't the it? The, the purple hair. Gabrielle. That was her, yeah. yeah. Nick's uh, sister. Nick's sister, absolutely. Well, she was in it as well. Yeah. She was in it. But anyway, you know, that's all next week's show, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And tonight's show, obviously. So... <clears throat> Excuse me. So, what have you been up to, uh, Paul? I've, I've been reading about conspiracy theories. It's, it's a difficult one for me because I believe everything I read, <laughs> and uh, so I don't know whether I don't know whether things are conspiracy or not. I just read them and go, "Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that." Well, well, this is it. Can I just mention a few people, please? Mark Kinnish. Now, Mark is a, an avid listener to us. Um, can you say hello to him? Hi, Mark. How you doing? Hi, Mark. And that was from uh, Paul Capper and Ed Gilchrist. And we've also got uh, Connor. Now, Connor Lunt, he's uh, listening in and he enjoys the footy chat. Does he? We'll have to do some more then. I wonder if he's a red or a blue. Uh, I don't know. Well, if he's enjoying it, then he's got to be a red, has <laughs> <laughs> he? He might be in this because no one's bought anybody. Yet. All the Everton have uh, bought pl- players. You know what the Should we tell them that all the Everton guys are outside the door trying to get in? <laughs> didn't, didn't David Johnson used to play for Ipswich Town he as played well? For he both, did, yeah. yeah. So yeah, they, they, they were blues. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. See? So the Reds and Blues, we've got it all yeah. on this show, you know. Did Manchester United play in blue once and all the fans went mad? <laughs> they did. They all went mad. I said, what's that? You know, I think it was an away kit. He said, what, it was, what yeah. are they doing playing in blue? Anyway, so that's enough of that. Um, and I'm glad you're, you're enjoying there, Connie, about our footy, because we do have football when the season begins and you, the air is blue and lots of ex- everything else. So uh, tune in for that, you know, because you will... Totally enjoy it. Have oh. we got? Uh, do you want? Do you want Ian on, or do you want to go to a song? No. Uh, uh, are, are we going on to a song? Get your coupon. Yeah, go ahead. We, we, we'll have a little bit of the small faces. The small um, faces are great, aren't they? I love them. The I, best. I, I. Do you know what? I was. Yeah. I've, I've just been saying to Jason. I've been getting them on YouTube. And little did I realise, you know, How good they were singing they were. live. Yeah. They were fantastic. Yeah. They didn't have little faces, did they? They had big noses. Yeah, they yeah. did, actually. That, that was did. the... Uh, <laughs> but I thought they were a fantastic... That was the joke, that. wasn't it? We haven't, it was not, not I've got a little face, I've got a big nose. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, Who uh, was it said that? Marius? Yeah, I think that... And, and uh, a big, massively influential band, uh, in, especially a well, band I'm very fond of, Led Zeppelin. They were a big influence oh. on Robert Plant. The first yeah. track that uh, that whole lot of love was uh, really based on that uh, Small Faces track, You Need Love, which is the one they used to open the set with. Mm. And that was... Uh, Robert Plant used to be a little mod. He used to go and watch the Small Faces in his Fishtail yeah. Parker. Oh, yeah. And he'd see them playing, you know, in Stourbridge oh, Town Hall or wherever it was, and, and, and they'd hear... You need cool, baby. I'm, I'm Stevie Marius singing that, and then of course he stole it. And cool. Years later, Stevie Marius driving across America, and he was in a band called Humble Pie with Peter Frampton. Yes. And he's, he's driving across the states in, a, in an open top car, and he hears it come on the FM radio. He hears Led Zeppelin singing, and he go, singing "That's me! <laughs> they stole it. That's me!" <laughs> that's it was, it's that's, like, isn't that wonderful? You know, because we were only talking about all that and Humble Pie and everything else, uh, whether to play that or something different. Yeah. But one of the best uh, live bands I've ever seen. Anyway, we're going to play the City Q Park anyway, so take it away, the small faces. The best in 60s and 70s music, plus a little bit of history. Tune into Frank Carlisle every Monday at 8pm here, only on Mersey Radio. Wasn't that absolutely fantastic? The small faces, love the small faces, and we've spoke about them playing live and everything else, and... Uh, 
I reckon. We was just shocking during, uh, you know, a break and that. And I was talking to Ed and Mr. Capper here. And he told us why. I've always wanted to know why the small faces broke up. And I was told uh, by Paul, Paul Capper, that is. Just Steve Marriott just left. And, uh, you know, he, he could have even gone to Led Zeppelin. He wanted them. And, but anyway, he made up uh, another band called Humble Pie. That wasn't so successful, unfortunately, for uh, him. Anyway, uh, getting off the subject, I am digressing. I'm going on to my first guest, and it's Ian Soph. And what Ian's actually doing, and I'm going down there on Saturday, he's doing a dig in Walton Hall Park. And that dig is to look for the, the old hall. That was there hence. Um, he's not He's not giving someone a dig Walton in Walton Hall Park. Hall Park, as he is. He's not what? Well, he's not giving someone a dig in Walton Hall Park. But looking at uh, Ian, he might just do that. I've, I've seen that happen. <laughs> I've seen it happen myself. But anyway, uh, it's going over to uh, Ian Soph. And Ian, he's going away as well. He's going to, you know, I think after the dig, he's off to uh, Greece or somewhere and he's going to enjoy a well earned rest. But good evening, Ian. Hello, Frank. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. I've got Paul Capper in and uh, Ed Gilchrist here. Uh, and uh, we're just going to. Can you tell us more about the dig, please, and the listeners uh, at Walnall Park this coming weekend, please? Yeah, well, it's it, this weekend is the festival, Frank. Uh, the Walton Festival. Right. Which is started up last year again after a 30 year absence. And last year we had about 17,500 people turn up over the two days. Wow. Um, and this year what we put together is a history stand and we're going to be asking people's opinions and trying to get stories and anecdotes and personal histories from Walton yeah. um, the dig itself won't happen until next year oh, okay. uh, probably in the spring but what yeah. we'll be doing is uh, we'll be getting some feedback from the people turning up to see what their interest is because yeah. so far on, on Facebook and on various things we've had hundreds of people interested yeah. Because the, the whole idea is that it will be a community dig, Frank. Well, the thing is as well, I think that's a fantastic uh, thing that you're doing because there will be people there who will be giving you some information about what's happened, uh, what you don't know about, what I don't know about, because I'm actually going down there on Saturday uh, with you, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, that'll be good, Frank. We can, the, the idea, I think, is to get, find people who've got stories yeah. to tell uh, yeah. For example, I don't know if you know the artist, Frank Green. Yeah, Frank Green, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah, fantastic. His, his sister lives around the corner from me, you see, and um, yeah. she gave me his number. Yeah. And I spoke to Frank a good few months ago now, and he remembers um, the old ice house that belonged to the hall. Oh, he right. remembers as a kid playing in there, so... Go away. But there's definitely people around who've got uh, anecdotes and memories of, of what was here before, so it'll be really interesting to find out. Do you know what? It's a pity, you know, uh, that he wasn't a little bit older, because what Frank has done, Frank Green, he's gone around Liverpool and he's done this sort of iconic photo, or shall we say, painting portfolio yeah. of buildings. and It's just like a W.G. Herdman. And Herdman, without yes, Herdman's, uh, and a son, by the way, there's two Herdmans, uh, without those two uh, fellas, we wouldn't have known what Liverpool looked like because more or less everything was destroyed, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, and without, exactly. uh, without their particular paintings. And Frank Green's the same. And another you fellow named Tankard. It's funny you say that, Frank, because I was only thinking that the other week. Because um, I've taken Herdman's book along on Saturday. Yeah. Um, and my uncle used to give Frank some space in the Liverpool art studios, oh. you know, down on Seal Street. Yeah, yeah. So my uncle, my uncle actually has one of the originals which he gave to me then. Oh, uh, And I was thinking about Frank being a modern day headman, really. Yeah. Because he yeah. painted all the, well, he went around painting all the churches, didn't he, in North Liverpool? Well, this is it. This is why I mentioned in the same breath Frank Green and the Herdmans. That's why I mentioned them because, and yeah, there's another, there's on. another lad named Tankred who did uh, like paintings in the forties and fifties. I tell you what, I'll do it. You bring yours, yeah. your one along. I'll bring my one along, and I'll bring the Tankred's one along as well. Tankred. Yeah, I've Tankard's never heard of him. No, he's absolutely. I'll, I'll bring them, bring them along and uh, show you. But absolutely, well, that'll be really good. I mean, 
I've got I've got hundreds of old pictures of Walton and of Liverpool which we're going to show, and also we've got people like Stephen Horton coming along, you know, from Liverpool. Oh, Hidden, no, Liverpool. Stephen, yeah, no, Stephen, yeah. well. Yeah, we've got Camilla Mansfield coming along. Who oh, comes Camilla, the yeah. Left them. Yeah, yeah, they, I think you know all these people, don't you, Frank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they're all going to turn up at different different times. Yeah. Um, and basically give uh, their own take on local history. Oh, I think that's absolute because Stephen, uh, Stephen Horton, that is, and he's yeah. another big ret. He's, uh, oh, good. <laughs> he, he, he actually did The Streets of Liverpool, you know, a, a, a book, and he, he presented... I, I, I don't know whether I've done a forward for him. I'm not quite so sure now. But yeah. I've done a forward for somebody. It could have been Stephen. And yeah. uh, he gave me a copy anyway. And it's like a little Bible if you wanted to find out anything about streets or how he got its name. And it's yeah. right there with uh, what Stephen did, Stephen Horton. Right, well, I've asked him to bring some stuff down because he also does, uh, he does the hidden... Histories of Liverpool, doesn't he, on the that's website? That's right, that's right, yeah. He, yeah. he also, he's, he's just written a book, or he wrote a book recently, about notorious murders that's in Liverpool. Right. And he actually had a piece in the Echo two weeks ago. Well, that's great, yeah. that, because Stephen is, you know, he's a lovely fella, by the way. He's a lovely yeah, fella. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he knows his stuff. It's just like anybody else, in all honesty. You know, they, they, they know the stuff. Yeah. And I, I've just got to mention Mo. Hello, Mo. She's uh, listening in down there in Essex. She's just sent me a message to me. What about me, Frank? You know, can't you mention me? So, will you say hello to her, Ian? Hello, Mo. How are you doing? Yeah, there you go. There are Mo. There's Ian Soph, one of our top historians, saying hello, Mo. How are you doing? Hey, Mo. Mo, <laughs> I used to live in Essex, by the way. Where about did you live? Yeah, I lived in Woodford Green. Ooh. Yeah, I also lived in Leightonstone, really, which is East London, obviously. Do you know where I lived? Whereabouts? I lived in Basildon. <laughs> That's where my best mate got married in the cathedral there. Oh, go away. Yeah, in I was Basildon, best man yeah. 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 What's going on, Dean? Hello, Frank Mo. How are you? Watch ya. <laughs> That's all you, you got a lot of our uh, southern friends there. And... Yeah. It's funny enough, uh, Paul, the yeah, Paul, why don't you just say that to oh, yeah, me? I was just going to say, in, my, my mother's uh, whole family grew up in uh, Sonning Road, which is across the road from Walton Hall Park and, uh, and Cranehurst Avenue, where the, the the rest of the family lived. And so they would have uh, they had a lot of uh, stories. I mean, they would have gone spent an awful lot of time in the park there uh, really? from the 1930s onwards, you know. Yeah, I've, when got, did, I've, when I've, did I've, I've got all kinds of pictures. My granddad was an amateur photographer. And he's got all kinds of pictures of the streets and the parks and everything there that uh, me mother would be able to dig out. That'd be that'd be fantastic if you could. Sorry, who's speaking now? It's Paul. Paul Capper. Hello, Paul. Um, did you say Cranehurst as well? Yeah, Cranehurst, Sonic, Sonning Road, which is—I mean, they, they, they were obviously sort of prefab twenties ones, I think that that, that they were put up in yeah. uh, in that area. Uh, you can still see they've got the, the street lights there, still really, uh, really old fashioned. They, they haven't changed them as if they're almost like a. Yeah, uh, it's not not far from the railway bridges there. Yeah, we used to swing off them because I grew up in Cranest. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that, I, I, th- I had three great aunties who lived there: uh, Kate Dot and Francis, the O'Hanlons. They were the O'Hanlons, yeah, yeah, yeah O'Hanlons. Yeah, so they were. Are they related oh, yeah. to Ian? No, no, funnily, no. He, Ian's, Ian's dropped the O off his. Oh, is it? Oh, so he's <laughs> posh as Ian. Yeah, yeah. It's not, the, it's not the Irish one, like the Irish. Oh. Well, anyway, listen, uh, go on. Uh, how long is this going to go on for? It's go, is it going on uh, Saturday and Sunday? Yeah, it's on from 11 till 6, Saturday and Sunday. And okay. um, something the uh, listeners might like, Frank, is we've got um, live music all day. Oh, brilliant. Because we've got uh, all local bands on. Is there anything for kids as well? Oh, there's an amazing thing. We've got uh, a Victorian fun fair for the kids. Oh, brilliant. Uh, we've got a beach. We've got boats on the lakes. A beach? Uh, oh, yeah, we've got a land train and go-karts. We've got a gladiator pit, an obstacle course, inflatable slides. This is all free. And uh, also we've got a, a gaming station, PlayStation area, and also Quasar. Plus, you might want to do this, Frank. There's a 100-foot military obstacle course. Oh yeah, I'll definitely do that. It's, it's, oh, oh yeah, you it's, know, uh, it's incredible. You, the, way, the way you describe it, like that, sounds like you're recreating D-Day. <laughs> yeah, especially with got the a kids beach and a salt course. We got else, yeah. Yeah. Don't care. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, uh, but uh, it's it's a massive thing. I mean, there's a fun fair. There's the Liverpool markets, the farmers markets, there's local traders markets. Oh, good. Uh, the, the army, the air, the, the army, the air force, the police are coming, the fire brigade are coming. Um, we've got thirty sports from all over North Liverpool that the kids can try for free. Ever from from archery, uh, boxing. The Smith brothers came last year. Oh, go away! Oh, uh, we've got footy, obviously, gymnastics, fencing, volleyball, tennis, table tennis, water sports. There's all sorts going on, plus all the community are turning out, so all the girls will be dancing on one stage. There'll be a massive screen, yeah. and um, we'll have all the community groups there, plus people like the NHS and the housing trusts and so on. So it, it's, a, it's a really a massive like community spirit sort of thing. That's yeah, for everybody. Be, everybody can enjoy it. It'll be the biggest it. festival. The yeah. biggest festival in Liverpool this year. Excellent stuff. That, that that's really wonderful because you know we we've got so many things happening in Liverpool at the moment, which it, it's more vibrant than anything else that I've seen. In all honesty, because um, I'll be talking in a little bit to the lads about uh, about what I actually experienced on Thursday evening. It's absolutely amazing, and you'd be made up at this as well because before you go away. Uh, yeah. You've got to go down to Man Island and see this particular exhibition, and it's about the First World War. It's really? oh, it's dang- it's called the Danger Tree. It's absolutely amazing. You've got to go and see it. It's the finest thing I've ever seen, and it's just yeah. it strikes you um, with you being a historian and with you being um, a sort of I'd say authority. On like twentieth sure. century, no, on twentieth century uh, 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 history, especially the superpowers and how the yeah. superpowers were formed, you've got to go and see this particular thing about the First World War because it's opened my eyes also. Uh, yeah. you've is got it in to the museum, and... Franco? I'll tell you where it is. Do you know those uh, black granite buildings right facing the museum? Yeah. It's yeah. there. It's right there. Okay. You can't miss it. It's right facing the museum. It's on the it's on the, the ground level, so you'll be able to go in, and it's free entry as well. What they do, they give you the iPads when you go in, and yeah. um, you just point it at the picture, and it, they give you headphones as well, and it just tells you this these fantastic stories. It's amazing. It really is. It says honestly, you'd be absolutely delighted with it. So. Well, when when you come at the weekend, Frank, um, I re- think you remember me telling you that the Shiproads Association, yeah. which are named after the Mauritania, the Lusitania, yeah. is where I live. Um, we created the our First World War Memorial a few years ago, which was put in the field closest to the Shiproads, and which, it's got a quote on it. You know, for when you return, remember that we gave our tomorrows for your today. You know that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we um, we planted a field of poppies behind it. And they were planted about three months ago, four months ago, and we've been praying and praying and praying that they come up. And over the last few days, you want to see, it's a blaze of red poppies. Really? Yeah, and it's in the form of a, a, not a Christian cross, like a Scottish cross. Yeah, yeah. But it's red, white, and blue with all the flowers, and then there's two pathways through the middle, and it sits just behind the monument, so. Oh, I'll have to have a look at that. Yeah, it's I have fantastic. to have a look at that because uh, that, that that's well worth uh, just going to have a look because how popular was the the tear or, uh, in St George's Hall? You know, with those poppies. Remember yeah. a couple of years ago, that was yeah. very very popular, and and I think the poppies, you know, symbolise as you know uh, the fields of the First World War. I'm not just talking about Flanders fields; I'm talking about all the fields. Uh, course, yeah. around uh, the sun and that which is it's, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen Frank I was over there before with my dog taking pictures of it yeah oh, good. so yeah. Uh, we'll have yeah. to have a wander over at the weekend so yeah, it's absolutely. Just, uh, everybody's welcome like I said it's all free so yeah. please come out it. and the, the last thing I'd like to say Frank is uh, I don't want to keep you obviously but you said there's so many things going on in Liverpool, but North Liverpool seems to be lost a little you know bit what? in the you took... of time over the last few years. So this is our fight back now. Absolutely, because I made up you said that. I am absolutely delighted you said that. Um, because North Liverpool seems to be forgotten for some yeah. reason. I don't know whether it's uh, people being lethargic or you know complacency has set in. 
And I think we need someone like yourself, someone like yourself, Ian, to say, hey, listen, you know, North Liverpool's being forgotten here. Let's do something about it. Simply because every every year I've always get asked to go down to um, Toxteth, uh, yeah. High Park Street, and give a little talk. And all that I do, you know, because I, I give up my time, I go down there and give a little talk to loads of people. And they're all made up, but every one of them think that I'm from there, the, the, you know, the, the area. And yeah. It's a crying shame that, you know, we can't do anything like that because they've got their building and then they put exhibitions up and, and everything. And obviously talkers and... If you ever do anything like that, I'll be, I'll always be there for you to give a little talk. You yeah. know that's no well, problem. Well, I think you might be uh, pleasantly surprised at the weekend at the amount of people that are trying to put Liverpool, North Liverpool, back on the map. I'm Obviously, with our that. history, but there's got to be a future for us as well. And like we say, this is a festival of Walton, but it's a North Liverpool festival. Yeah, well, I'm made up. You said that as well because rather than just saying like one area, the old North of Liverpool, it's brilliant. It's absolutely yeah. brilliant because you've got the likes of not a screen. Why not a screen? You know what's it? Why yeah. is it named not a screen? So you've got Croxton. Why is it named Croxton? So you've got all these wonderful uh, uh, areas of North Liverpool, even up to Kirby as well. Yeah. You know, you've got all these wonderful uh, places. But Walton, Walton Hall Park, uh, as I must, I used to play badminton there and footy there and. Yeah, bit of cotton there, and you know, <laughs> as you do. Can, you do a bit more at the weekend, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> we'll set you up. Set me up, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, listen, Ian, it's been absolutely wonderful, and I know that you're going away in a couple of weeks, or you know, soon. Yeah. Uh, so, will you come on before you go? I'm actually going uh, next week, Frank. Oh, so you're on next week. Yeah, that didn't even. Yeah. Know. So I said to Jason, maybe the end of August. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, okay, that's, uh, that's great. That that's great. Back, anyway, yeah, so. so but uh, anyway, well, I'll, I'll be talking. So I'll, I'm going to give you the ring during the week because I, yeah. I've got to talk to you over something. Have a nice, <laughs> which yeah. is uh, which is which you know you told me about, and I was absolutely delighted. And um, in sunnier climes, shall we say? I'll just leave it at that. So I'll be talking yeah, to you about. If that. the weather's good, it will be a fantastic weekend. So Jason, bring the kids as well. Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he, he can't talk to you because he's, he, he's, he's too far away. Yeah, he's too far ah, away. Okay, you know. <laughs> but he says, yeah, it's F.O. will be down. All right, well, uh, thanks very much anyway, Frank, and uh, I'll see you at the weekend. I'll see you at the weekends and I'll talk to you during the week. Thanks a lot, Ian. Bye. Cheers, Frank. Ta-da. Bye-bye. Ta-da, everyone. Bye. Ta-da. Isn't that absolutely wonderful, you know, to think that you know, there's people like Ian, and he must have a little team as well. Uh, that I think not just not just like like South Liverpool and East Liverpool and you know West Liverpool. Like, I think it's got to be all Liverpool rather than because have you noticed all that stuff? Everything centres around the city centre. You get Sefton Park takes a lot. The, the Sefton Park takes a lot of attention as yeah. well. You know, so that area. Yeah. You know, when you got events, you know, big gigs and festivals and things, Sefton Park takes a heck of a lot of. Well, well, well. Interest. Look what they've got there. Look yeah. what they've got there. They've got that magnificent Palm House. Yeah. That's um, that George <laughs> Melly fought and fought and fought to have it uh, rebuilt more or less I mean they landscaped installed. the whole park when they built it didn't they? Yes they certainly and, uh, did and that's not what's happened in Walton Hall unfortunately you know no. Walton Hall has never had that luxury no. no no and you know Walton Hall Park is absolutely wonderful mm. but also what you've got in Stanley Park yeah. Stanley Park yeah. is the the Isle of Gladstone it is. conservatory park, Stanley park. which is bigger than the Palm House yeah. Strange, it's, you know, the conservatory yeah. is bigger. And do you know who built it? Do you know who built the both of them? Shall I tell you? There were two fellas from Glasgow named Mackenzie and Moncare, and they built them around the same time. How about that? Well, they built the Palm House first, and they just went down and yeah, yeah. 
you know, to that attending to the Irish Liga Eric Lads. Yeah, because the two of them have got a facelift, haven't they, the last few years? Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> the first time that they done a job, I don't know whether you're aware of this, boys, but the first time that they ever done uh, the Eyes of Gladstone, or which is called the Eyes of Gladstone now, was um, they just done a job and everything was all right. They had a bar in there, but, you know, in the summer, it was just too hot. It was a, it was a greenhouse. Yeah. And that's what it was. Yeah. But today when they've done it up, you know, redone it, obviously, air conditioning. And that's what they uh, failed to do the first time. But, you know, it, it's it's just absolutely wonderful. And the surrounding area of Stanley Park, fantastic. I, I've done a few gigs in the uh, Sefton Park, Palm House. It's fantastic. Uh, space to play in as well. But if you if you forget that you're in a, a greenhouse and you look round, it's you you think you're in a scene from Apocalypse Now or something with the the greenery behind you if you're not careful. Yeah, we we did. Me mum was a funeral party in the in the Palm House. That was something else. Yeah, that was really good. Well, can I tell you something? Um, have you ever heard of larks in the park? Yeah, yeah. Well, the larks in the park. Um, it, you know, obviously it was all music festival, and I was invited down to, sing. to give a talk. No, yeah, see, see the way he comes in, and see the face on him there, and then <laughs> sing. Anyway, no, Ed. And I went down. But funny enough, I just started off singing. And you all look like, you yeah. all expected yeah. me to give this lecture, which it is, you know, in the end, uh, ex- expected me to give this lecture, and I went into a rendition of. Uh, you know, and, <laughs> but just before they went out, you stopped. Yeah, before they went out, I said, "I'm only kidding." <laughs> and they all came back anyway. And uh, oh, but it was the first fella ever to give a tour. Uh, you know, or a, you know, a lecture with a, a band behind me or whatever. You know, for Larks in the Park. I remember to, I went to Larks in the Park in 1982, and I was I was about 15 then, and that was uh, Echo and the Bunnymen playing on the. On the stage there, and of course that was a a big moment in my life. It was first, uh, I suppose I call it a proper gig. But I actually met Ian McCulloch one time. I said, "Oh, the first proper gig I went to." He said, "What do you mean a proper gig?" <laughs> as if, as, yeah, as, yeah, as yeah. if, as, as if I'm I'm like, "Oh, I'm sorry." <laughs> as you do. That was awkward. Well, Kenish uh, sent in a message. He said, "I agree with you there, Frank. You know about the conversation about not Liverpool, Scotland Road, Vauxhall Road area." And the other parts of Liverpool, not Liverpool. Glad that's being mentioned because we really need to do things for not just the north of Liverpool or the south of Liverpool, but all of Liverpool. But as I said, Ed, now you must know as well, Paul, that everything centres around the city centre. Pretty much. Um, I, I, I live in the north end of Liverpool. I live in Seaforth by the docks. So um, I think it does. Uh, it does need some regeneration. And uh, coming back to the football, the the idea is that the Everton new stadium yeah. is supposed to be a done deal. I mean, I don't know, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about here mm. specifically, but it's supposed to be happening. And I imagine if that does go ahead, then the the north end of Liverpool will start to regenerate quite a lot. I would think from that. So, in spite of not being a blue, I'd really welcome the. No, I think it's going to re- enhance anyway. That would be, that would be great the news for north, the North End. The waterfront. But what do you think of it? How, how long have we got? Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I get... How long I have we got, Jason? I, I get uh, shouted at. We're about five minutes over. Oh, um, are we? Yeah, okay. We're, we're, um, I'm sorry, Dave. I, I have to... Because we have to go to uh, <laughs> Chicago and uh, Grant Neighborgall. We'll play a song first. We'll play a song first. Uh, and this is Weight of the Rain by Grok Dogs. Grok Dogs. That sounds like a WWE wrestling combination, doesn't it? Well, it's like a band you're but you jam in and make records with uh, Bad Wolf. And you've the, got the, like the Grok Grand... Dogs. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Grok Dogs. Is it, is it a guy's name or is it like something else? Is it? I, I could, well, we'll, we'll ask them out. We'll, we'll, we'll ask when them, we're yeah. Grok sort of. Dogs. But what about, uh, you know, even Grant Niebergall's band, That's a great Butterfly name, in the Traffic? That's a fantastic name. I mean, Grant Niebergall is one of the best names. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> and it's a, a really tricky it was Niebergall and Rados. You know, I was on Facebook. Tricky them. 
I was on Facey yesterday night, or last night, or whenever it was, and there was a girl, and she put a comment on, and she had to, the best name in the universe. Do you know what her name is? Huh? Chrissy Breeze. Chrissy Can Breeze. Chrissy Breeze. Breath of fresh air, isn't it? Really? It is a breath of fresh air. That's exactly what I said to her. Said, Gabriel breath Zephyr. <laughs> anyway... Anyway, uh, we're going. Up, we'll be going over to Grants after the uh, weight of the rain by Grock Dogs. Grock Dogs, the best in sixties and seventies music, plus a little bit of history. Tune into Frank Carlisle every Monday at eight pm here only on Mersey Radio. Is Grants on now? Is he? Right, right, you know, because we've got to go over to it. Do you know where that? Do you know when I was down at the pier heads and I went to that wonderful exhibition? You've got to go to that, Paul. You've got to go to it. I knew it. Um, I met Martin O'Shea, who's a friend of mine. Yeah, I know Martin. Yeah. Uh, do you know Martin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great fella, isn't he? Yeah. And he said to me, Have a look what I've done. He's put all this, this fair up. He's put us, and he said, Would you like to go on that? I'm dressed up in a suit, as you know, the way I dress. And I went, I said, I don't want to go on that. I said, what does it do anyway? He said, it just goes up there and comes down again. So I went, yeah, okay. So I went on it. It was G-Force. I was never so afraid <laughs> in, all, in all my life. You had the juxtaposition between exhilaration and terror. <laughs> terror. I was terrified. It was absolutely mad. And I was screaming. I was really screaming, and I, he said, well, well, are you all right? I was going, ah, 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 and he opened my eyes, I had my eyes closed, and I was looking at the sky, I was upside down, it was <laughs> absolutely hilarious it was, you know, people were all laughing at me when I got off, they were saying it, <laughs> are you screaming there, and I went, yeah, I don't know, and it was real as well. Anyway, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, you've got to get down there. It's absolutely wonderful, especially if the weather's uh, nice. And I'm going to bring my little granddaughter, Sophia, down on Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, I can't take her down on Sunday. I'm going to a, uh, I'm going to a, a family uh, communion, so I'll be at that on Sunday. But I will bring uh, the baby down one day. Right, so anyway, uh, we're going over to uh, Grant Niebergall, all the way over there in Chicago, and uh, Paul Capper, who's sitting alongside me, and the wonderful like, Gilchrist, Laura's dad, is bound to be asking you there a few questions. And there's uh, Ed playing with his iPhone and you know, nah, getting I'm, all I'm, music I'm and looking everything. looking at Grock Dogs. Oh, he's looking at Grock Dogs, oh, there it is. They've got a couple of clips on there. Oh, Facebook, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's, that's cool, isn't it? That's I think it's Ted Spaniak, is that the right way to say it? Yeah, well, yeah, I think so, yeah, Ted Spaniak. It, it, it's, I remember couldn't couldn't even pronounce Grant Niebergold's name, and uh, Chris it's, 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 oh, Now we've got Ted Spaniak. It's unbelievable, isn't it? But Billy Klein seems a, you know, a nice, gentle, roll-off-the-tongue sort of name, doesn't it? Yeah, there's Billy Klein. Remember the days when American TV shows were called like uh, Alias Smith and Jones, which is easier to do, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Rather than you know, have you seen some of the names of actors and actresses though? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I I look at the uh, you know the, everything. You know, the, I'm, I'm, are you looking at me? And I'm, I'm getting I'm getting all these funny looks because I'm going on and on and on. <laughs> Anyway, we're going over to Grant Nebergo because he must be sitting there twiddling his thumbs. And it's uh, good evening and good afternoon to you, Grant. Hey, Frank, how are you, sir? I'm very good, I'm very good. So what's it like in uh, Chicago? The weather is fantastic. What's the weather like over there? Uh, well, we're going to get some rain today and then uh, it's a little muggy. Oh, it's right, not, so, okay. Not like the snow we get when Paul visits. <laughs> and Paul's sitting right next to me, and he's going to yeah, say right. hello now. How you doing, Paul? Hi, Grant. I'm fine. I, I can only ever come when it's snowing because it's cheaper to come then. So it's. Uh, I have I have been in the summer, and the the, the one summer I was there, the corn got burned because it was too hot. So it's it's yeah. one it's one thing or another, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have we have two we have two seasons here, brother. Well, actually, three. We got uh, summer, winter, and construction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, but man, what a, what an honor to be on the show again with you guys today, man. I, I uh, appreciate the love, and um, I have uh, a good old dear friend of mine, Ted Spaniak, here with me, and 
I just had the privilege of meeting uh, Bill Klein, um, what, a week ago, if that? A week ago. Yeah, and uh, we actually got together for the first time uh, Friday night as a, as a band and played at this really uh, unique little pizza place. And um, it was it was amazing. And uh, Ted and I have a little bit of history, but I'll let Ted do that talking, and if he so chooses. Um, and, um, you know, I'm just going to hand the floor over to them because this isn't about me, it's about these guys. Well, thanks so, a lot, Grant. So, uh, am I speaking to uh, Ted here? This is Ted. Hey, good good job with the pronunciation of Spaniac. Well, let's let uh, you see. Sometimes we can read and sometimes we can't read. No, you did a good, you did a good job with Spaniac. You know, it doesn't not roll. Oh, listen to me. I'm just getting uh, this, yeah. What yeah. part of Chicago do you come from? Are you not a scouser, are you, like us? I'm not a, a scoundrel? A scouser. Scouser, scouser, not a scoundrel. Oh, he's a scoundrel. Oh, he's a scoundrel. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to the small, small speaker. <laughs> We've got a beat on. I've got a day's night 83 times, so you've got to give me some... <laughs> You've got a you beat got to give me some yeah, It sounds like he's going halfway between McCartney and George Harrison. George there. Harrison, yeah. He's just yeah. flitting between yeah. the two. Uh, Would you like to join a band, lads? Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, listen, boys, well, you know... We've been going on about uh, your particular band's name, which is Grok Dogs. Uh, how did you come up with that? Well, ah, yeah, everybody, go ahead. <laughs> you explain this one. Well, we've been doing a lot of explaining uh, because people said, what? Uh, it, the derivation comes from a 1961 science fiction novel by Robert Heinlein mm-hmm. called uh, Stranger in a Strange Land. And right. uh, it's a real complicated explanation but I can simplify it it basically boils down to mutual empathy right. uh, Billy and I here have been have been buddies and and since first grade we learned to play together we played in a bunch of high school bands together we grokked each other we understand each other back and forth inside and out and so if it applies to a musical thing um, grokking if we're if the band is grokking then the audience is grokking back at them and it becomes sort of this feedback loop of mutual empathy and understanding and, you know, fab gear, stuff like that. Do you know what, though? It's funny because Ed Gilchrist there, who's uh, the father of uh, Paul Kappa's um, uh, uh, drummer in his bands, you know, the amazing Kappa band, and he's just got my heads up now, and it said, um, Grok is a word coined by American writer Robert A. Heinlein. Is that Heinlein? That's right, that's the way it's pronounced. That's right. 1961 science fiction novel, Stranger in the Land. Now then, how come you read that? How come you... Was it a, a school project or... Oh, no, I, I was a big science fiction fan and uh, I read it when I was uh, like 18 or something. I read all his books. Oh, okay. And okay. The, it, it was required reading in high school. It, well, back in the day it was, yeah. They used to, they used to read an English class uh, before we were in high school. Well, do you know what, fully enough, uh, you'd have loved next week's show. Do you know why? Because it's conspiracy theories. Uh, uh-huh. and it's all, it all involves a more or less like it's science fiction, isn't it, really? And the week after that, we have a, a ufologist on. Because, uh, you know, about the unexplained, you would really like the show, lads. And that That's name, a- Billy Klein, as well, that, that easily rolls off. Billy Klein tongue. rolls right off your tongue. It does, doesn't it? Does, doesn't it? Billy Klein, you know, a member of uh, the Grok Dogs. I used to, you, what do you actually play? Do you play uh, guitars? Is there a drummer? Is there a, a, a pianist there? Or what? You know, so, you know, give us the information on that. Well, I'm a guitar player, singer, songwriter. Um, yeah, just like Teddy. Teddy has more instruments in his uh, repertoire than I do, but uh, guitar player. Have you ever heard uh, Paul Kappa play? I, I don't know, because you're in uh, Chicago, I know that, and he goes over there. Uh, as you know, Grant's a must have told you about Paul, and he goes over to a, a band called uh, uh, Bad Wolf. And Bad Wolf came over here uh, just a month or two ago and played at the Cavern. And they were absolutely phenomenal. But what I'm saying about Kappa here 
is that he's one of the finest guitarists I've ever seen. He's unbelievable. He actually plays it with his teeth and everything, just like Jimmy, Mr. Hendrix. <laughs> you know, he's absolutely unbelievable. And, uh, and he's going to ask you the question here. He's trying to get into... Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you, what, what, what was the pizza joint like that you played? What was the what? What was the pizza place like that you played? Because Grant said it was like a very special place, and I thought, well, it's got to be something special. They had pizza um, in music, pizza in music. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a place to get good. Oh, well, I mean... It's, you know, the, so, somebody used to say, there's no there's uh, no place left to, uh, you know, stink anymore, so uh, we are... Uh, we're getting our stuff together over there. Only wonder, I, I did do a gig in uh, in Illinois. Um, it might have been somewhere off Randall Road one time. And uh, it was a place called Rookies. It was a burger joint. Yeah. And we were on the posters and it said, Last night of the Dollar Burgers plus Kappa. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been with a side of Kappa. <laughs> and that, I, I thought that was, it was one of the most wonderful Double experiences. Double burgers is a bad name. Because when, when the smoke of the burgers cleared, we were able to take the stage, and that was uh, that was pretty cool. So the Dollar Burgers wasn't a band? No, no, the last night of the Dollar Burgers was... The, the, the burgers were a dollar. Well, could you, well, could you imagine... I was in you know, Where the lads were playing, you know, in this pizza place. Could you imagine, you know, with grok dogs and someone would go in and go like that? Uh, what do you want on your day? Uh, I'll have some of that grok dogs on me, uh, whatever they are, you know, on my pizza. You know, when you're asking, yeah, uh, put some uh, ketchup on it. A little bit of ketchup. <laughs> oh, <on it. laughs> oh, no, no. Grok dogs with pepperoni, and I'll take a, you know, some. Yeah. So, listen, lads, uh, your album. Now, your album is, um, you know, is it out? Where can we get it? And what's it called? It's it's being finally mixed. Oh, it's right. Called okay, Love. So it's not out yet, then. It's not out yet. It'll be real soon. It's called Love and Trouble. Love and, and Trouble. Uh, love and Trouble, because uh, every song's either about love or trouble, so we figured let's call it Love and Trouble. Yeah. And uh, it's very eclectic, you know. I mean, back in the day, we're influenced by, uh, you know, the Beatles. And uh, they used to be able to have all kinds of eclectic type of tunes on their album before everybody started getting pigeonholed into sounding the same every single song. Yeah. So, I mean, look at Rubber Soul, right? I mean, you've got uh, Norwegian Wood and Michelle and Think for Yourself and Run for Your Life and uh, all different kinds of tunes. Well, so listen, we're very eclectic. Well, listen, you know uh, what you're saying there, and, and Ed's even went, and myself and uh, Paul, when we listened to uh, Weight of the Rain, uh, you know, we was expecting, you know, like a... a, a, a a Black Sabbath, you know, coming out. <laughs> then, uh, you know, oh. it, it was more like, hey, is this country? Or, you know, very gentle uh, on the ear. Whereas we were expecting our ears to be uh, blown off and melted. So give us a little bit of, uh, you know, an idea of that type of music that you play. Well, go ahead, Billy. Well, no, I, I, I mean, if you're talking about that particular song... Um, and it's it's kind of got a light touch. It's it's very sad, you know. If, if yeah, you know, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, that's why um, I asked you. You say wait to the rain. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Obviously, I, rain has a symbolic meaning, doesn't it? Really, especially weight as well. It must right. have some sort of symbolic meaning. And so, right. I only wanted you to explain that. Why? Yeah. If um, if you've ever had trouble in your life, I can't imagine that you haven't. Um. And I have. Um, I was trying to figure out what what is this weight on me that's when I wake up in the morning, okay? And you're you're heavy. You feel your legs are heavy. Your arms. You're you having trouble holding your head up. For God's sakes! I'm like, what is this? What is this? And it popped into my head. I said, this is a weight of the rain. Yeah. You know, the rain symbolizing trouble and. Yeah. Anguish and yeah. you know all those, but uh, it, it came from. Sorry to interrupt you, Billy. It came no. from. It came from the housing crisis. I mean, Billy, tell tell them where it came from. Where does well, where it come from, man? Well, to you know, dispel dispel all the uh, the mystic meaning behind it. There's not much, but uh, uh, I, I mean, I lost everything. Yeah. I lost everything. Yeah, you go back to okay. 2008. Here you're talking about the uh, yeah. You're talking about the crash, yeah. Yeah. Right, so I went, you know, um, went through a lot of stuff, and and I was dragging myself around for a couple of years, yeah. and 
you know, that's what kind of came out of me. Yeah. Uh, is that song lyrically? If you listen to it, but but it's relatable to any kind of uh, trouble, trouble. That we can all relate to because, as you said, you know, we've all been in that sort of trouble, especially after the crash, because yeah. it was very financial to most of us, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that. Which is, and, uh, it's po- more poignant than anything. I, I knew some uh, some American friends who completely lost their savings, just vanished, and you know they lost everything that they you know uh, been working for. I don't understand oh, yeah. how, how, how how heavy that is. You know, in terms of what you're talking about weight, it's a that's a heavy thing to happen to anybody. Um, and I'm just curious. I just wanted to ask you about uh, you know you, you're referencing the Beatles, and you're talking about the eclecticism. Of the Beatles, and uh, one of the curious things about a uh, uh, Chicago is is how it's a, a world centre of, of blues, you know, from the nineteen forties and fifties onwards. And I wonder, you know, do, do you find do you find the Chicago blues impacts on your writing at all? Um, actually, no. Uh, I kind of like to play the blues rather than listen to them. <laughs> it's more fun to play them. You know, after one, four, and five chords gets old after a while for me. So, uh, um, then not make. I, although we were at a great blues jam last night, man, it was totally fun. No, I, I, I understand what you're talking about about one, four, five progressions becoming a bit. Uh, it's a tedious thing, but I think that uh, I, I think it's, it's all, to me it was always about a feeling and uh, you know a sound. It's, uh, particularly the Sonics that came out of Chess Records and that kind of thing. Those sort of references. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I suppose it's because I I don't come from Chicago, but I I, I, I agree with you about the uh, the format becoming uh, tired, and obviously you want to do different things. Well, you know, way to the rain is one four five. It is, <laughs> well, and then you never stray far verses. from it in music. You know, that's all you need. If, you, if Billy Ro- Billy played me this song, and I just said, "Man, that is a great song." So it's just record this. It's great. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, boys. You know, uh, just before we finish. Uh, you did mention the Beatles, and Paul's just mentioned the Beatles. Uh, were they a great inspiration to you for your music? And oh, absolutely, uh, completely, completely. I mean, I sent you another song called uh, "Boomtown Breeze," which is uh, electric guitars, two two electric guitars, bass, and drums. Just because I want it's about it's about that time, yeah. and uh, it's a, it's a uh, it's an homage to that sound. Yeah. Which uh, you can do so much with um, if you arrange it right. Right. But listen, you know, I know that you said that your particular uh, album is being um, rem- or mastered now. Uh, when can we see it out? When can it's going to be on a CD Baby very soon and uh, under Grap Dogs. Well, listen, I I know that you're a friend of Grant's, and uh, obviously you live in Chicago, do you? Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, listen, do you know, if uh, Grant makes arrangements uh, for you to come on again and give us, you know, when it is launched, would would you be willing to come on again and talk to us? (laughs) We would love to. Honoured, absolutely honoured. Well, that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Uh, listen, boys, I've got to go over to Grant now, but listen, uh, just thank you very much, uh, both Ted and Billy. Uh, and uh, Ed wants to say uh, thank you, and so does uh, Paul Cappy. I certainly do, yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks thank you. Thank us. you. No, thank, thank you, sir. boys. Thank uh, you. So, Grant. Sir. Thank you very much for uh, an, an, another guest spot. So, will you organise... You know, oh, for, for the launch of the... Put- the Sorry? <laughs> I'll send my bill in the mail. <laughs> so will you uh, organize... <laughs> yeah. So will you organize uh, the lads to come on again and uh, l- let's know more about the album? Absolutely. And send um, a few songs through as well so we can play them. You know, I, I'm just going to I'm just gonna say this real quick before we uh, go our yeah. separate ways across the pond here. Um, this was my first time working with Bill... Um, and my umpteenth hundredth time working with Ted in like the last ten years, mm-hmm. yeah. and I got to tell you, I, I, I am, I am as excited to play with these guys as just as excited as I was when I heard Paul Kappa. Really? And, I, and I, what? I'm not an easy sale either, guys. I mean, I play with a lot of great musicians. I consider it a privilege and an honor. But I'll tell you what: there's something about the way these two cats work together, and I can almost understand now when they explained it. You know. 
to me in private now on the air about their childhood and growing up together and actually just knowing and getting each other, you know, and, and it's very rare that you get that chemistry. And now I fully understand at least both sides of them because I've always I've, I've worked with Ted in the past and like I said, just Bill. But t when me and Ted were in um, the other unit, and now I'm I'm working with these guys in this unit, I can I can totally see where where Ted's uh, we'll just call it a rebirth or I don't even know what the word to use is, but it they just it just sounds great. And, uh, <laughs> I actually put Frank, I put a video uh, on your page uh, right. from last night. Um, okay. with three songs, three covers that we did. I encourage you to take a look at that. No, and, will uh, do. Will do. And I'll give it um, a little comment on as well. It, you right. know, uh, well, listen, boys. It's been uh, it's uh, Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the first choice of names. <laughs> anyway, boys. Uh, as I said, uh, the wonderful Grant Niebuhr goal. Uh, we'll get hold of you because Grant's a, a regular guest every month uh, on our show, and when that, when your particular album comes out, uh, you know we can have a we can we can have you on again, and we can play a few songs as well from the album, and uh, you can give awesome. us all That's the details. Awesome, thank you. No, thank you, lads, and Grant. Once again, thank you so much. I will speak to you uh, next month. You're welcome, Frank. I love you, crew. Paul, everybody. We'll Cheers, guys. You. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that's, uh, you know, that, that was absolutely wonderful. What we're going to do now, we're going to uh, go to a couple of songs. And this is The Great American Challenge by Behold the Brave and Four by the amazing Kappa Band, believe it or not. Uh, so we'll, we'll come right back after that and then we'll have our guest, David Howe, who is a Doctor Who uh, wonderful wonderful uh, historian about Mr. Who himself or the Doctor anyway here's a great American challenge by Be All the Brave and Four by the amazing Kappa Band the best in 60s and 70s music plus a little bit of history tune into Frank Carlisle every Monday at 8pm here only on Mersey Radio well there's the uh, there's lovely uh, Laura and a wonderful great American shit. No, it's not. It's four by the amazing Kappa Band, what we've just been listening to. Absolutely brilliant. Anyway, anyway, um, I've just got to, uh, I've just got to say before we go over to David Howe that Paul, he's a big uh, science fiction buff. He, he just likes all this science fiction and everything else. And yet, yeah, Paul, you, you quite surprised me by saying about Doctor Who. About Doctor Who? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't really watch Doctor Who very much at all. No, not, since, a... not since the cyborgs were on um, oh. and the Daleks in the 70s. Because you got and, frightened. And I think, I actually think this is true because it used to frighten me. So you, like, you'd hide behind the couch when the cyborgs and... Daleks came but on. what about it now? You know, and the kids. Well, I, I lost, I, I lost track with it. I, I think. So, um, whereas I, I never lost track of Star Trek. Uh, I was never really a Star Wars fan until much later. But Doctor Who seems to pass me by. Well, I just want to know who the next Doctor Who is. Oh yeah, well, uh, you know, I wonder if uh, David's will have any idea. I bet he knows, but he's not going to tell. Mm. I wonder if he will because it's who do you think it should be? Who do you think? Of, all right, yeah, there's something for you. There's something to dwell on. Who do you think the next, the next James Bond should be, and the next Doctor Who? I reckon James Bond should be a woman next. What do you think? Jane Bond. Jane Bond. Yeah, that'd be. Fun. No, but I'll tell you for okay. why. I'll tell you for why. Because Ian Fleming wrote about a, t a particular person who was male. And that particular person you can't change, you know, from male to female. Right, so that's out of the equation. Um, and the likes of Doctor Who. Doctor Who, in my opinion, should be still male. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a male chauvinist, I'm not sexist in any way, but I think it should be a male uh, person. I know that he's a time lord. 
and notice the way I said he's a time lord. I did notice that, Frank. Thank you. Not she's a time lord. These guys are good writers, though, and and, and they could write in mm. into the into the you know the whole mythology around Doctor Who because yeah. you've got that really tight. Like like Star Trek is, yeah. the whole story is really tight together. Yeah. And I think they could write into the entire history of okay. Doctor Who a female, okay. someone who survived they, from the planet. They could have Doctor Who at the uh, on the event horizon of a black hole, some, and being yeah. pulled into some sort of singularity and then coming out as a, as, as being a, a woman instead. Why not? Absolutely. Yeah. Why not, Frank? It could be that. Well, 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 yeah. But give them something different to write about as well. <laughs> well, I would give them something to, uh, different to write about, but it's now, it's the way Doctor Who has been brought back to life. Oh, wait, I, I think we've got to go over to David, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm awfully sorry. Uh, David's been there for a couple of minutes and he's just talking. Listen to us ramble on, yeah. What are they talking about? <laughs> exactly what are they talking about. Anyway, it's... Uh, our special guest, David Zow. Hello, David. Hello, David. David's not there, so we can still ramble on. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, there yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, this is great, this. You can uh, hear me now, fantastic. Slight tech problem there. Hello, guys, how you doing? Hi, David. All right, all right David, I thought you got off because of what we were saying. Because <laughs> we were talking <laughs> such junk. <laughs> yeah. So, listen, <laughs> no, listen... That's fine, I'm used to that, that's fine. Well, listen, uh... <laughs> Ed has just uh, said, I wonder if David and I will be the uh, the next Doctor Who and who it should be. I mean, not who, but what kind of a uh, person, you know, young, old, male, female, what? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I, I haven't a clue. Um, I, I heard you say that I probably know, but I don't know. So I, I honestly haven't got a clue. Um, I mean, I think it's going to be a young male, um, but that's just me just guessing, but... I really don't know. Um, I know. I think it'll be someone we've never heard of. Right. So, do you, do you reckon that it's not like Peter Capaldi, who everybody had known about, you know, and uh, Eccleston and well, it might, David Tennant? I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it's it's a very difficult one, isn't it, Frank? Um, I mean, if you, if you go back through the, uh, the the new Who doctors, I mean, Chris Eccleston, very well known actor. Um, obviously he only did one series, but I mean, he was incredibly well-known anyway. Um, David Tennant, nobody had really heard of him. Um, he did that um, Casanova um, show for Russell Davis's production company. Yeah. Um, and so he'd done a few big finishes and stuff like that. But generally, you know, people hadn't really heard of David Tennant. Um, and Doctor Who obviously made his name. Um, then we get Matt Smith, who no one had, had a clue who that was. But, yeah, we had to look him up on IMDb, you know. <laughs> Um, so no one knew he was and then, then we get Peter Capaldi um, who, you know, a, a good actor uh, well known for one part um, you know, his thick of it um, character um, so, you know it's very, very hard to say it's very, very hard to say I mean, I, I, I think that the, the, the best person to cast is, is someone that you don't really know you know, not, not, a real, not like you know, Bruce Willis or someone famous mm. you want someone that's not really famous he's got he's got acting chops who can do the job um and i think that after having an older doctor in peter capaldi um sorry Peter, should be listening um i mean as uh, in the greatest respect um they're going to go to someone younger um it's, it's just what i think you want to you throw the change don't you you've got you've, you've had someone older you want to go to someone younger next um that's what i think yeah but um we shall see we shall see um mm. but of course you could argue that the next doctor's um David Bradley, um, because he's playing the Doctor in the Christmas special. So, you know, who's and he's older than Peter Capaldi. <laughs> who's David Bradley? Well, that's the point that you're not supposed to know who it is. Ah. I'd go for Dolly Parton oh, he's playing, he's playing the, She was great in Night of Five. He's playing the first Doctor. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, you know, uh, Ed Gilchrist said uh, it should be a woman. I just thought it would give a completely new slant on the entire series. Does it need one? Um, That's what I said. I guess, well, don't they do that always? All the characters are quite different from the previous characters, aren't they? They have something special about themselves. And Well, that was uh, one of the points I was yeah. making. Was, if it was yeah. Dolly Parton, I'd watch it. You'd watch it then, yeah. Because <laughs> she, she, she was good in 9 to 5. She was, and, and that's got um, time in the title as well, hasn't it? So Yeah. But uh, mo- moving on, 
Yeah, we'll move on from Jolly. Uh, we, right. we will digress. But it, it, I think there is some speculation in some quarters in the media that, that they'd like a, a woman to play Doctor Who next, and you hear that, and, and you know, they're but not it, really... It's one, of those, it, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's the same as James Bond should be a woman. You know, it, it's, it's the same thing that comes out all the time with these kind of parts of that. I mean, should Wonder Woman be played by a man? I mean, I don't think people sort of brilliant. say that that should happen. Brilliant. Um, Absolutely brilliant. You know, I'm glad you put it that Your problem why, with James... Why is that? What? Yeah, well, what about Bruce Willis doing that? I think that would be good. But doing Wonder Woman? Yeah. Um... Well, I, I think, no, I think no, let's the, be serious here. No, I, th- I think the name is in the title, really. you got Wonder Woman uh. is a woman. Yeah. Um, James Bond is a James. Yeah. And uh, Doctor Who is, well, I've got a female GP. So why? I didn't realise yeah? you were all such genderists. No, we're not so, genderists. So kind of Doctor Who sexist. could be I'm a anything. Man. But the thing is, you say, look... look. Yeah, but- in my opinion, but, James. But again, what, what you have to remember is that J- James Bond is a code name. It's not. It's not his real name. Yeah. It's the code name. Yeah. So you know why, why can't yeah. you have like I don't know Scarlett Johansson turn around and cop a wink and say it's Jamie Bond now. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Ah, but the thing is, you see, I, I understand that, but I think attendances would fall. In my opinion. And you met you, you mentioned Scarlett I, Johansson, I, I, and she's I American. Don't know. So no, you, so, you know, you get a character I, I, like I, I uh, really do. I really will. You get a, I mean, the the, uh, the, the Lara Croft character. Who was oh, she? Oh yeah. yeah. No, I, I like you. Forget you her go name. for an Angel- Angelina. 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 The way she you was. Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. Kate yeah. Beckinsale. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there's some yeah. great, great, great actresses around. I mean, what I've always said is that. If, if you want if you want to cast a female as the doctor mm. and whichever actress you chose um, was absolutely the best actor who mm. actually auditioned for that part and was absolutely perfect for it bring it on fantastic yeah. well, yeah. The if you want to cast a woman, you cast a woman yeah. that's not the right reason I think you're dead right I think like any other job really you should get get the best one yeah. for the characterization of that role. But look, Tom Baker had like a multicoloured exactly. scarf, and Dolly Parton's got like a multicoloured coat, hasn't she? A coat of many colours. And that surely qualifies well, her. Well, Dolly would, aren't she? Ah, she's too old. <laughs> Stop going on we're, about we're Dolly Parton. We're going to have to get, borrow a scarf to wrap around Kappa, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think we'll put him in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Nice, I'm going. He's got his tinfoil hat on. Is he wearing his tinfoil? I'm getting a bit worried. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's going gonna to break into a song any minute now by Dolly Parton. I can feel it coming, I can feel yeah. it coming, yeah. Do you ever I remember... Frank lining up Dolly on the turntables, even uh, as we speak. That's it, yeah. Do you ever remember um, uh, the, the, the film called Signs? And when Mel Gibson, you know, the, the character walks in and he sees his uh, brother, Joachim Phoenix, and the two kids, and they're sitting there with these silver foil hats on. Well, that's what you think. Uh, uh, do you think Paul should be uh, wearing one of them sitting in the corner? It, it, with with an well, I, 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 just, I, I worry in a very kind of yeah. concerned, Absolutely. concerned yeah. manner, you know. Da- Absolutely. D- David, while Frank's going on about tinfoil, can, can I just ask you okay. to tell, tell us a bit about what you think is coming next in the next series? What do you think is going to be all about? Who, who's the writer for the next series? Um, well, the, the showrunner is a guy called Chris Chibnall. Um, now, uh, Chris has got a very, very good um, pedigree. Um, he's creator and writer of Broadchurch, um, which is kind of one of the top dramas um, on the BBC at the moment. I think it's BBC anyway. Um, but whichever channel it's on, it's one of the top dramas. Um, he's written for Doctor Who in the past. Um, he wrote, I think, right in the thing, he wrote The Dinosaurs of a Spaceship episode, I think. Um, and he wrote a couple of, other, couple of others as well. Um, so he kind of knows the show. He's been involved in it. He's done various things. I think he wrote a couple of episodes of Porchwood um, when that was on. So he's got some degree of, you know, sci-fi chops about him. Um, but, you know, who knows um, where and when he wants to take the show. I mean, it, it's Doctor Who. It can go anywhere, be anything, do anyone, whatever. You know, it can. It, it, that's the beauty of it. It's, it's such a flexible format that you, you really can um, take it in any direction. So I, I really don't know where, where he's going to want to go. I mean, it's very interesting. It's always interesting when a new showrunner takes over. 
Well, what um, about uh, this Doctor Who Mating Dives Museum? Can can I ask about that, please? Um, yeah, you can ask about that. Um, so I've got a, a, a large collection of Doctor Who um, toys, games, ephemera, um, going back to the 60s. And um, we're in the process of, of setting up a private museum um, so that I've, I've actually got it somewhere that it can all be displayed and, you know, uh, and is actually accessible. Um, at, the mo- at the moment, it's all in boxes. I can't really get at anything. So uh, we're in the process of setting that up. Um, it, it's all going well. We're, we're kind of busy sort of building the environment at the moment, as it were. And um, when it's all done, um, we'll, we'll hopefully have an open day next year and people can come and actually see it and stuff like that. Um, and then we'll kind of move on forward from there. But as I say, it's, it's a private museum, so you can't just, you know, rock up off the street and sort of go and see it, if you so like. But the, we'll, we'll probably have... Okay. No, I was just going to say... I think we'll probably have some sort of a some sort of a system where people can get in touch and say, hey, David, I'm in the area, could I come and see it on such and such a day? You know, and if that all works and is convenient, then yeah, sure, of course. I thought you was going to put us in a museum, you know, where they have these, like, empty spaces and whatever, and uh, <laughs> people could go and see no, it. No, I, I, I tried... I gone on I, tour with it, you see. No, I tried... I tried when, when we lived in North Wales... Um, you know, ju- just across the wash from where you are at the moment. In, well, I don't know where you are at the moment, but, but just across the wash from Mersey in Prestatin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we tried to um, see if we could find a sort of a fairly permanent home for it there. Uh, and I approached a couple of the big, you know, country houses and stuff like that, and no one was interested. Um, and so obviously it became apparent that, you know, if I wanted to have something, you know, fairly permanent in which to display it and keep it, I- I'd need to kind of do it all myself. Um, as is as is life, really, isn't it? So, so that's what I'm doing. Um, but no, it's not going to go on tour. It's not going to do anything like that. We certainly haven't got funds or, or ability or logistics to be able to make anything like that happen. Yeah. Um, but so, but yeah, we're hoping it will set up, um, as I say, for next summer. And um, as I said, there will hopefully be an open day where we'll, we'll, we'll you know, we we'll get some some music and some food and stuff like that, and people can come and have a look and stuff like that on the opening day. Um, and as I said, then we'll, we'll see where it takes us. And uh, who knows? I mean, if, it, if it's extremely popular and mega popular, maybe we will have funds to be able to do more and, you know, take it on a roadshow or something. But, uh, but that's not, certainly not in the plan at the moment. <laughs> well, that'd be great because, uh, you know, there's a hell of a lot of fans out there who just love Doctor Who. Well, you can see by, you know, the the series that keeps coming out every year, you know, the new series, of the, and, and well-known actors, by the way, who want to be involved in it, and well, you know, anyone, oh, yeah. whether they're playing Doctor Who or, you but, know, but that's, Yeah, that's always been the case, though, um, Frank. It's like, even back in the, in the 60s and the 70s, um, you know, Doctor Who was the show that actors wanted to be involved in, um, because they all had kids, or all of them had kids, and as far as the kids were concerned, you know, they weren't serious actors unless they'd appeared in Doctor Who. <laughs> so, you know, and you, you've got some incredible actors, like, you know, Marius Goring in Evil of the Daleks and uh, George Pastel and people in Tomb of the Cybermen and uh, Peter Barkworth in The Ice Warriors and stuff like that. Um, you know, tremendous actors giving tremendous performances. I don't know that Marius Goring, because Marius Goring was a fantastic actor. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I, I didn't think that uh, he was ever in the uh, the show itself. But that's always been the case, you know, and it continues to be so. The show just attracts um, talent of such a calibre, and that, of course, makes everybody up their game. Um, Because if, if you're... You know, appearing in the same scene with one of these actors who could just wipe the floor with you unless you were really, you know, behaving yourself and doing what you need to do to the best of your ability, you're going to, you're gonna, you know, you're going to flounder. So it, it really does help to keep the show, you know, in tip-top um, position. Um, and it's really good to see. And it's fantastic. I was interested as well, I, I'm sorry I don't know all of your names, but somebody just before I came on mentioned that, that Doctor Who was for kids. Um, I'm it's not a, sure that's still the no, case. No, no, um, it, it, no, no. Are you sure? It's very dark. Yeah. No, it's not for kids. No, I, uh, I, I'm sorry, Paul. When he was first watching watching it as a child, he's uh, he, he he's got his own band. He's very well, very very well known, and he says it frightened him. The cyborg yeah. actually frightened well, him. So, 
That's what you might have heard. I mean, yeah, I, I was I was terrified by Doctor as well in the sixties. I mean, I, I kind of looked watched it from um, outside the living room through the crack in the door um, because yeah, it was so city. scary. Yeah, that's the fella. Um, and again, it, it continues to be so. I mean, I, I don't know if any of you guys saw the um, the season finale that was on um, not last Saturday, Saturday before, and the one before that, the last two parter. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the darkest I have ever seen Doctor Who. The darkest and the most disturbing that I have ever seen Doctor Who get. Um, I mean, it was amazing television, but I, I, I wouldn't have liked to have been a parent trying to explain what was going on to a distraught, you know, ten-year-old yeah. trying to go to sleep. Um, but no, the Cybermen weren't going to come and turn them into one of them kind of thing, um, but and it would be all right. The thing is, though, you um, know. <laughs> The, the way technology's gone and the way like kids watch the television today, it's more frightening now because uh, if you go back to the 60s uh, and 70s, as in Paul's case, and you leap forward to 2017 as a child, uh, or even that 2017, one of those episodes came back to uh, 1964 or, you know, 1972... How would the kids feel with those particular things coming at them? You know, to, in today's uh, Doctor Who, they'd be terrified, they'd have nightmares. I think the way that is, Frank, is that it's all relative to the time that it was, because in the in the 70s, I mean, what you'd see on Doctor Who was uh, what you'd expect to see on television generally. Everything was relative to what you, you saw, yeah. special effects-wise, yeah. and probably in yeah. the 60s. And one other thing that used to frighten me about uh, Doctor Who believe it or not, was the theme tune, which is yeah. a BBC Radio Fox <laughs> workshop. And it's, it's, yeah. it's one of the most uh, iconic yeah. TV themes of uh, ever. And it's a stunning theme. Yeah. But it's and, and and the way it's created without the, or the way all the instruments that the BBC yeah, yeah, Radio yeah. Phonics did, yeah. it's stayed with you forever. That so. well, well, I was in my teens, but I had a lot of younger sisters, and uh, my mum wouldn't let it show. She wouldn't let us watch it. Yeah. But a Saturday Saturday tea time show yeah, 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 would, was, would go off. Wouldn't be allowed to be watched. Why? Yeah, too frightened the music. Yeah. As soon as the music comes on, turn that off. Well, what about you, uh, David? You mm. know, Paul's mentioned the music, and so has Ed. And you know, I never mentioned it, but you know, the, it's very distinctive. So, what do you think about the music anyway? And they've retained it, haven't they? I think, I think it's, I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, just to correct um, a little thing there, it, no instruments were used in the creation of the original theme. It, it was all created by tape loops and swoops and banging on pianos and scraping keys on pianos and all sorts of things um, to create all of those noises um, by a lady called Delia Derbyshire, um, based on the composition from Ron Grainer. Um, so that's why it was so distinctive, was because it was created in a very, very unique and distinctive way. Um, but I think it's it's a great it's a great piece, um, and to some extent it is a shame that it's all orchestral these days, and, and we haven't sort of got that incredible otherworldly theme and the white swirls and stuff like that on the screen. Um, but in a way, we have because we can always watch the old stories again. I mean, they're all available on DVD and streaming, and God knows what. So um, you know, they're all there for people to access if they want to go and, and dip into some classic Who. But yeah, I agree with you. I I, I think. One of the things that I've often said about um, the classic series of Doctor Who was that it used its audio palette um, to the best advantage. Um, nearly every story in the 60s, um, every control room was a unique kind of sound underpinning it, the warbles and, and noises, and the, the noises that doors make as they open. I mean, they don't all go, you know, like, like they tend to do these days. You know, communicators don't all make the same sound they, they do on Star Trek, for example. Yeah. Um, and all of this kind of sound palette underpins all of those 60s stories and makes them so incredibly affecting when you watch them or listen to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, again, something that we seem to have lost in that, you know, at the mo- Doctor Who at the moment, every second of screen time is underpinned by an orchestral score. Yeah. And there's music playing the whole time, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Um, and I actually find it quite distracting at times um, because the music is trying to tell you what you should be thinking or feeling at any given point. And it's like, I don't want to be told. Yeah. You know, the drama should be right. That I'm doing it anyway. I don't need you to tell me it's a funny scene or a quirky scene or a scary scene. I don't need that. Um, whereas I, I miss the sound effects of control rooms of, and, bu- and bubbling this and that and strange machinery and ray guns and and all of that kind of thing. Um, 
I think it's a shame. I think it's a shame, and I, and I think in some respects, television's lost that art, and it is an art yeah. of of doing that kind of sound design on a show. Um, interesting, interesting. David, uh, that's been absolutely fascinating, and unfortunately, we've come to our, uh, the end of our time because we have to oh, go no. over. We have to go over to Hollywood. Hollywood. Oh, I, I, we, we got Dolly on. <laughs> no, we haven't got that. We've got Donald Trump on. You know, do you think he could be the next Doctor Who? We need, we need a, a Doctor oh. Who theme park that can compete with Dollywood. Dollywood, yeah, Dollywood, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Trumpy, but yeah, Trumpwood. Anyway, uh, David, it's or been mate. it's been absolutely fascinating again as usual, and it's a pity you're not on no next worries. week because we're doing conspiracy theories, which would have been right down your street. Uh, well, there might be a reason why I'm not on next week, but I'm not going to tell you. Okay, and uh, even the week after, <laughs> even the week after, we've got a ufologist on, which would have been right down okay. your street, anyway. Oh, fantastic. Anyway, fantastic. David, it's been absolutely wonderful, and the lads would like to keep say a big keep thank keep you. Those tinfoil hats well positioned, guys. We've got them on now. Yeah, yeah. Jason went and made us them, so we're sitting here with our Good. little tinfoil hats on. Practicing for next week. <laughs> I'm working now to the fire. Thank you, David. <laughs> see welcome. you, David. Bye. 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 Well, that was the wonderful uh, David Dow, and what we're actually going to do, we're going to over. Go right over to Norman Greenbaum. Oh, what did he sing? Norman Greenbaum. Spirit in the Sky. Spirit in the Sky. This is absolutely fantastic, and it's all right. Come on, take it away, Norman. The best in 60s and 70s music, plus a little bit of history. Tune in to Frank Carlisle every Monday at 8 pm here only on Mersey Radio. Oh, right, um, that wasn't that absolutely brilliant, you know, Norman Greenbaum. Isn't that a funny name, Norman Greenbaum, you know, and he won it wonder. Yeah. He just had a won it wonder, but isn't it powerful stuff, you know, the guitar playing and everything, absolutely brilliant. Uh, uh, the, the immediate uh, impact of a square wave of a fuzz box. There you go. Going all science fiction on you there, Frank. It's there you go. I know, and... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting all kinds of messages in and uh, everything else, you know, from Do you want me to keep people. talking about fuzz boxes? But, <laughs> but anyway, Michael Carter's uh, tunes in, boys. Can you say hello to Michael? Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. How you doing? Absolutely brilliant. Now we're going right over to uh, our Hollywood correspondents, and it's Joe Whittaker, and it's good evening and good afternoon to you. Good evening from us, Joe. It's good afternoon from me too, from uh, 108th. Eight degrees in uh, California right now. We're having our heat wave. Wow, wow, and it's it's uh, it's it's the same. We're having a heat wave in here. Listening to these two with me. So we've got Paul Capper here, and we've got Ed Gilchrist. And Hi. what's happening? Any any good news coming from America? No, Trump's still here. Still. <laughs> Well, that is good. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he's not there, is he? Is, is he not in Europe? Or has he just come back? I think he's gone he's back, come hasn't back. he? I think he's gone yeah. back to the States. Oh, you are lucky. More, yeah, more, more trouble out of Russia, huh? In what, what respect? And that's uh, the concert for, you know, the, the uh, spat behind the Clinton, the Clinton campaign and it's all hitting the headlines, you know, this... Trump Jr. had a meeting during the campaign and all the rest of it, you know, all the fake news. You love it. Well, the thing is, why hasn't he been impeached if, uh, you know, because what you have, you have uh, Trump the day before he meets uh, Putin saying, oh, we've got to sort this out and, you know, the Russian this and the Russian that and Putin this and Putin that, he better step in line. And all of a sudden they have this meeting for two and a half hours or whatever he comes out all smiles, all pally wally, and everything else. So, what was really said? It's all in the handshake, Frank. That was a weird looking handshake they had. Well, there you go, you say it's all in the handshake. The, 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 the reason they can't impeach him is because all the evidence is little clips out of context. Mm. And when they go into court with the impeachment, the whole clip has to be put in front of the, the judge and. It'll show that it was all lies because they were out of context clips. Like the handshake was an out of context clip. 
But it's also true that impeachment's very rare in the United States, isn't it? It's very no, rare. Not so. even, even, <laughs> Nick, a few. even Nixon wasn't impeached, was he? he, he, he got out, no, he got out of it. Well, he said yeah. they were going to impeach him. So, as, as people are annoyed over there, Joe, are, are they actually annoyed in America? Yes, they are, you know. Um, we're getting told so many different stories. And, you know, like anything, you just want to know what the real story is. And uh, I think Trump and his campaign play on that, you know, blame the press and whatnot. And, uh, anyway, what can I tell you? Still well, fun and gay. Well, this is it. It is all fun and games, but, you know, it's not a matter of fun and games for the likes of us because these are two superpowers that are playing with, the, uh, you know, what's happening in the world today. And we can't be having that because if these two great superpowers, they've got a, a common enemy, as, the, as, as you know, and that's China. And China's right in the middle of everything. Absolutely, they've been taking quite advantage of um, of America backing off and making good trade routes with Germany. I see just recently, so it's very interesting what's going on in Europe as well. Yeah, and you've got uh, North Korea kicking off with their missiles, so we're in a very yeah. dangerous situation at the moment. KG, well, let me just. Um ask a question or maybe make a make a point I, I think you just mentioned that these Korean missile things and you know if you were to list all the the intercontinental ballistic missiles that they have in Korea and, and then list the warheads that they've got on them and then compare them to the number that the United States has got uh, and maybe look at the, the range of all these things you know Korea is nothing it's like you know having a pea shooter and and the Americans have got this massive stuff. I, I can't believe that the Koreans are actually in no, any way I, say, sense a, a thinking of having a first strike, which is what everyone's going on about in the press. Yeah, I, I fully understand that. And it is. You, you, I, I don't think it's, it's even like a pea shooter because they'd be gone before. Yeah. They, they, well, it's not even a pea shooter. You're exactly, right. It's not even exactly. that. But you know, it's just the way this fella is acting. The way this fellas act, that's all that I'm saying. I think that I, I, you know, devil's advocate, I'm not siding with either side here, I just say devil's advocate, the Koreans have been battered by the Americans for some time now, it's been like a vendetta almost. You know, do we know the truth about what happened in the Korean War? No. Never will. Never, Never will. will. And it's the forgotten war, as they yeah. say. So what, say to you, uh, you know, you've got all these people now who, who, who are in here, and you know, especially as who... Cambridge educators and he's coming out with all these wonderful uh, well this is what's happened you know so anyway what's happening anyway with you Joe anything new uh, have you seen any films or well I met a couple of interesting um, celebrities uh, all, all uh, Ringo Starr couple records they we have a, an annual birthday party once a year and I was lucky to be in attendance all right and He's 77 or 8, wasn't he? Yeah, looking good. Yeah, yeah. It, and also, sorry, Joe, was Dolly Parton there at all? <laughs> <laughs> Take no notice I, of him. I did meet Mickey Rourke as well. Oh, Very brilliant. Nice. Oh, brilliant. Yes. Wasn't he great in that wrestler film, wasn't he? I thought he was great in that. Great actor, Mickey. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, is, I thought, yeah. I thought, I thought, he excelled exactly. himself in that wrestler. I thought, I thought it was a fantastic performance. And what was he like as a you know person? You know, was he down to earth, or was he a bit of a diva, or what? No, not at all. Very low key. In fact, he was just coming out the gym and uh, looking a little hot and bothered. But no, he was uh, my friend George Lodwell, who's uh, quite a famous stylist. Had styled him, and he recognised him, and. He was very, you know, he was saying hello and didn't, didn't mind having photographs taken. And nice, seemed a nice guy. And he's gone through the, he's gone through it with his uh, profession a bit, hasn't he? He's, he's suffered from addictions and yeah, but he, 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 he did uh, all the daft things like um, Botox and facelifts and doing this and oh. doing that, and he, he, he just looks totally or looked totally different from what he used to look like. Yeah, he has the Hollywood look about him. 
<laughs> exactly, uh, exactly. I was watching a film the other night. I don't know what it was. Anyway, I was just watching, and there's uh, Faye Dunaway, and she completely and utterly surprised me. You know, with her face, she's got a permanent smile. Unfortunately, you know the way she's had her face on, and she was a, a lovely woman. And the likes of Goldie Horn, uh, Meg Ryan is wow. You know. Uh, such a pretty young woman there, and you know uh, she's changed so much because of these uh, plastic surgeons. Well, she uh, she had a, uh, quite a problem with her alcohol abuse, didn't she? She was um, suffered again through all these addictions, and it's so yeah, yeah. But you see a lot in Hollywood, unfortunately. But yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. In the theaters, have you guys seen uh, any of the new movies, Wonder Woman? Well, everyone's going on about Wonder Woman. I'm being honest with you. Um, I watched the first 20 minutes and I was waiting for the action to start and I got that fed up. I turned it off. Oh, my goodness. Is, is it, is it really that slow to start? I haven't yeah. seen it at all. I've was... not got around to seeing it yet. The Amazonians. Yeah. Wonder Woman. Uh, the Amazonians and... Uh, but I believe it's uh, it's very good. I believe so, you know, because it's about the first world war. Yeah. Oh, well, are you, are you, the have you had the just to be released uh, Dunkirk? I'm actually looking forward to that movie. Oh, yeah. I'm Tom looking Hardy. forward to it. I'm looking Harry forward. Harry Styles. To it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Have you ever seen uh, their finest? Now that's about the second world war as well. And it's it's a it's a comedy drama and it's absolutely wonderful. So what you need to watch, Joe, is their fi- British. It's their finest uh, with Bill Nye. Absolutely brilliant film. Bill Nye. Bill Nye. Yeah, uh, you know he's a great uh, British actor. Sorry. Does he have any ties to Liverpool, Bill Nye? I, I, I've seen him at the match, funny enough. I've seen him at uh, Liverpool were playing Arsenal and uh, he was sitting in front of me and I said, all right, Bill. And he just looked at me and he went, hello, how are you? And I said, oh, I'm all right. Yeah, so that was it. That's the only tie that he had to Liverpool, whether he's an Arsenal fan or a Liverpool fan, because I didn't like to tell him or ask him. Rather, because Seems like a nice fella. He's, he's a fantastic man he's, and everybody loves him. All the uh, you know the people that he works with, actors and. Does actors. he live in Hollywood? Does he? No, he's uh, he's based here. Nice. He's he's never moved. But you know Hollywood do uh, get him because he's such a fine you know upstanding, stiff upper lip kind yeah, of uh, actor. So we got the also coming in in the theatre soon. War of the Planet of the Apes. Are you excited? Ah, yeah. I've, I've seen the tra- I've seen the uh, all the banners for that. Looks awesome, doesn't it? Well, the thing is, yeah. you know, Effects. how many, uh, how many planets of the apes? Like, films? I know, right? There's always a new twist to it. W- w- will there be a confusion over what whether we're going back in time or forward in time again? I always get lost with those things. Well, this I, I get lost myself. You need a time lord. You need, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need so, a doctor. So what, who? It's Tolly. Uh, so, Joe, have you got any idea whether it's going to be a confusing time thing? Or is it is it I in a fixed place in time with that particular film? Is it War for the Planet of the Apes? Is it going to be like later in time, or is it going to be going back, or what? I don't know. I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know we, we we get confused with all the films you say because when it used to be like um, shall we say the Rockies, you knew where, <laughs> as he was getting older, yeah, yeah. you know, so you knew where you were, and even um, Michael J. Fox and uh, what you was went that? Back to the Future. Back to the Future, bad. but well, you, you knew where, where you were going, and that could yeah. have carried on. Yeah. But, but the, the terminology is prequel and sequel. Yeah. Now, yeah. yeah. So, but is it a prequel to the original film, or is it a prequel to the, some of the later guess, films that are just really. It is I guess on, on, on that, that now hurts my head, and maybe we shouldn't get an answer to that. No. No, because I, I think it'll be more confusing, and it's like all this Fast and Furious. Um, Thing that keeps coming out, and uh, I, I don't watch them, unfortunately. Joe, unfortunately, we've come to the end, my darling. 
Always a pleasure. Ah, oh, it's been great as usual, and thanks for your uh, wonderful insights into Mr. Donald Trump, <laughs> Planet of the Apes, and uh, and the hundred and eighty degrees. So you uh, just get chilling, chilling, as they yep. say, in your air conditioning room. Okay. You got it. Till See next you next time. week. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Well, well, that was the lovely uh, Joe Whitaker, all the way from Hollywood in the 180 degrees. You know, I, I don't know. Anyway, um, and it's just just to say thank you for listening in tonight. Uh, this is Frank Carlyle for the Mersey Radio. I have to thank uh, Mr. Ed Gidclis. Thank you, Ed. Thank you for having me on. And uh, Mr. Paul Caffey. Thanks, Frank. Are we playing out with Jolene or anything like that? Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> I don't believe this. She's going on about Is he banned for next week? Anyway, uh, net card. Uh, anyway, next week we've got, uh, as I said, Asia Broth, David Johnson, and Dolly Parton, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to that. Mightn't be able to move with Dolly, like, but then again, who wants to move with Dolly? So all it says from me and Jason Pennington, the producer, is thank you. Thank you for listening in. And we'll see you all next week, God's will. And thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.